Hey, help me ducks, it's Simon here. Welcome back to the Hermit's Cave. So, something a little bit different today, the Tarot of Loka. Um, and there's a bit of a story behind this deck because this deck um, has been in my local, I was gonna say metaphysical shop, but that wouldn't be an accurate description. It's, there's a, a shop that's been around for about 40 plus years um, in Nottingham that's a little bit alternative. It does have a few crystals. It's got lots of clothing um, and things like that, as well as different kinds of smoking paraphernalia. Um, but they do have a very small selection of tarot decks, which I bought from them in the past. This tarot deck has been on the shelf in the cabinet in this particular shop for as long as I can remember, for as long as I've had a channel. <laughs> Um, and I've often looked at it and for whatever reason, you know, I've, I've chose a different deck or I've never really felt the pull towards this deck until Sunday. So on Sunday, I just had a wander around and I had a look in the shop and I saw it. Bearing in mind, you have to ask them to get a key if you're interested in anything in the cabinet. Um, and I went online um, and had a look at some of the images on Google and stuff, and I thought, shall I get it? Um, but for whatever reason, I, I didn't. And then I was in Becca's chat on Sunday night, and they were talking about tarot decks, and have you got decks that you've got an eye on, or decks that you've got coming to you? And I just happened to mention that I almost bought the tarot of Loka. Um, and then the next day, which was yesterday, um, my friend Justin posted in the Hermit's Cave that he was keen to get this tarot deck as well. So what happens, you go down a little bit of a rabbit hole and I've been having a look at the images and I'm really excited about this deck. It is different. It's not like, I was going to say any decks I've got, but I suppose the closest deck that would be compared to this is something like the Arcane Tarot, um, because this is billed as a game. So it's the Tarot of Loka, a card game by Ralph Horsley and Alessio Cavator. I think that's how you say his name. Um, but it is, it's a game. But what's interesting about this deck, and there's not a lot of information out there about it, is that, you know, you can use it, there is instructions in here about how to play the game Loka. Um, but also, you know, it's a full playing card deck and it's a full tarot deck as well. So there's all different variants of how you can uh, use this. And this is what I meant, oh, fi my fingers aren't usually purple. I've just been getting some blueberries out the freezer to thaw. I should have uh, taken care of that before before coming on uh, to do a video. But anyway, I'm amongst friends. Um, now, in recent years, this has been released by Los Scarabeo. But this one is by River Horse. And after speaking to my friend Justin, um, he was saying that River Horse was the original... Um, publication and it was a kickstarter deck originally way back when um and then it went mass market by los Scarabeo. so i was really surprised when because i couldn't see it in the cabinet all i could see was this uh when i just went and purchased it a few moments ago um that it was the river horse version so i'm really pleased about that so on the back, it says a card game for the whole family based on medieval tarot games. And there is multiple languages in here as well. So let's um, grab the scissors. And we will have a look. Right, so oops, these are the packs of the cards. Shall we uh, zoom in? Well, first let's have a look at the little little white book. So Tower of Loka, you've got the contents on the front. 
So um, not a lot in English, but you've got English, French, um, Deutsch, Italiano, Espanol, and Portuguese. So um, English, French, German, Italian, uh, Spanish, and Portuguese. So you've got the game and um, how to play the game. You've got your deck listed here of what you've got. The game goes over quite a few um, cards. Now there is a good and evil card in there, which is part of this game, but I'll talk about that um, in a minute. Um, then you've got some uh, smaller and larger games as well that you can play if you don't want to go through all of this of how to play the game um, and then you've got some optional rules as well and then you've got a little bit about tarot reading under appendix three and then you go into other languages so you've basically got 11 pages um, and it's around how to play the game and then this very small bit here about uh, tarot reading so Let's uh, let's zoom in and have a closer look at this curious little deck. I'm quite excited to be working with. So these are the backs which have all of the elements. So you have your fire, water, um, air and earth. So, and these, this is the evil and good, good and evil cards. Let's pop them there a second. We'll zoom out a bit, actually, just so we can get everything in. We have our Major Arcana up to 21. These feel nice as well. These are really nice cards. Um, then we have our Suits. Okay, so these are really beautiful aces as well, aren't they? So we can see here we've got fire, the fiery flames on this particular card, and this red. Now, all of the cards, whether they're minors, majors, um, they're reversible, but not to read reversals, if that makes sense. So it doesn't matter if the card, card's that way, or that way, you'll always have exactly the same image. It's a mirror image. Um, well, mirror image isn't right either, would it? Because if it was a mirror image, it'd be looking that way. But you get what I mean. It's the same image reversed. So you can't read it as reversals because you wouldn't know that the card's reversed. You can shuffle this deck, you can drop this deck, you can scoop them all up and they'll all be in the right way up which uh, is great for somebody like me who uh, drops a lot of things and probably you, Jen, as well, if you're watching. <laughs> um, we have our earth suit with this flower. We have our water suit. And I like this because you've got this reflection. It's like um, the Alps with water and you can see the reflection. And then here we have our air suit, which is these swirly, windy kind of um, designs here. So the pips are literally pips. So we've got the, the image repeated two, three, four, five, six, seven. And again, it doesn't matter which way up, you've got the eight and the symbol in the top left-hand corner, no matter which way you have it. Um, nine, 10. And then you have your, um, your jack. So the page. You have the knight, which is C, which is cavalier. So, you know, going back to older Marseille type uh, decks. And I love the fiery colours. The suits are, you know, in keeping. We have the queen and we have the king. So basically, if you were just to remove the cavalier card, you've got your, um, and just have your um, miners only, you've got your 52 card playing deck. Um, but adding in the Cavalier, with these two, we have a complete um, tarot deck. Okay, so I love it for that, that reason. 
um, and the cards feel really nice. They're, they're smooth and shiny on this side and they have a little bit of a, a greeny feel on the back, but the quality of the card is really nice. Now, this deck um, cost me just under £30, but that is from an independent stockist. Um, the reason why I rushed to get it is because, you know, Sod's Law and all that, I thought it's been on the shelf for years. Now I've decided I'm going to get it, somebody might go and buy it. Um, I need to worry because as soon as I took it off the shelf, there was no price on it. So she asked what the price was and she whipped another one out from under the counter, which had a price sticker on it. So I paid $28.95. Now, it's not available online in the UK unless you're going through a third party seller. So Amazon, isn't that beautiful? Amazon um, in particular, um, don't stock it. They do in the US, if you're watching this in the US. Um, it is on eBay, and Justin managed to get a couple of decks from eBay for quite a good price. But they, they vary. I've seen this from a third-party seller for £200, um, which, you know, oh, just look how beautiful the colours and the illustrations are. I mean, I love the, the red here, but these earthy tones are really really beautiful we have our water and these are gorgeous as well wow look at that queen and the king is a skeleton that's interesting and then we have our air suit Beautiful. I really am digging these illustrations as well. I think they're really lovely. So that's our miners. Now you do get, as I mentioned, um, these two additional cards, which is good and evil. Um, I don't believe in evil. Uh, <laughs> that's just my belief. Um, people can perform such atrocities I get that why people would refer to that as evil, but um, my definition of evil, I think, is linked to, you know, my upbringing in a church and things like that and associated with the devil and everything else. So I tend not to use the phrase evil. However, I love how the lemna skit goes in different directions here. So you've got those polar opposites. Um, these would be really interesting in a reading, and I'm going to keep these in the deck. They they are for the game, uh, which I talked about. You know, at the beginning of the book, it tells you how to use good and evil within the game. However, I think that if I was doing a spread, and good or evil came up, depending on where it is within the spread, would give me an indication as to whether you know there's light or shadow elements and and things like that. I also think it's interesting for people who perhaps do read with reversals because this deck doesn't lend itself to uh, read with reversals. So maybe having, and again, for me, it's terminology, I don't like it, but light or shadow. If a card was to come up, I don't know, say it was the hanged man and it was next to the evil card, we would interpret that a little bit um, differently, uh, more of a shadow aspect just look how fantastic the hand man is actually <laughs> we'll get to that so you don't have to use good or evil um but i can see benefits of using it as well so um so what we have here these two extra cards we have a full playing card uh, deck and if we take out the uh, cavalier we have 52 cards at the moment we have 56 because we have a full minor suit if we're thinking in tarot terms so let's have a look at the majors and again i'm going to zoom back in here so you can um have a look so here we have our fall um, and we are only of course getting half an image because as i said it's Can use it both ways but we've got quite a an interesting looking fall I, I dig his little green hat and he's got his uh, swag over his shoulder 
we have the magician here which is really interesting he's got his torch he's got his cup he's got um green kind of leaves foliage representing um earth and he's got like a, a feather for air rather than the sword which again if you think about the miners they're, they're not showing swords they're representing the elements so i like that as well beautiful high priestess really lovely card i love that blue it's so striking we've got the black and the white pillars so that's lovely here we have our empress um yeah i mean she's heavily pregnant um she's sitting on her throne she's got this um kind of like wheat around her representing her connection with the earth etc our emperor looking very regal on his throne with his shield i love the way they interconnect as well it's really clever how they've uh, they design this our hierophant oops so obviously we don't have the two supplicants that we'd see down below but we've got this hand raised up another one reaching out oh there's a beautiful lover's card i do like that card a little heart carved into the tree that's lovely our chariot a black and white horse wow i was really kind of going with it with the whips rather than holding on to reins but he's got his sword there look as well above his head justice quite unusual to see a male in a kind of a traditional style or feel to a tarot deck but I've got the sword and the scales love the hermit love the hermit I love that you just see his beard and his mouth but he's about to reveal himself he's got his staff with his lantern we've got the sun and the moon almost eclipsing each other here but you know he's about to pull back his his hood it's lovely gorgeous card our wheel of fortune oh i love the strength card beautiful the color and the intricate detail of the artwork in this deck is just beautiful i love orange you don't often see orange in traditional decks like this we already had a glimpse at our hanged man earlier but what's nice about this is you've got you know um both versions in in frame it's not just half of him or anything like that you've got the whole person there suspended hanging death it's interesting all these body parts and it's got this huge scythe we have temperance quite a traditional looking temperance now the devil is called the fiend which is really interesting i'm not quite sure why that is and again you know the little booklet obviously doesn't tell you anything but i'm surprised that um when you because you know I, you might think automatically well the devil perhaps they shy away from turns like that but then they've got good and evil as cards so i don't mind it too much i don't tend to like um switch around but the fiend interesting but it's the devil card, clearly. You don't have our young couple here. Um, but you still get him again. He's got his hand in that as above, so below. And he's got his uh, torch. The tarot. 
power these people fall in it's like it's been completely destroyed beautiful star card the moon i love this this is really interesting because you've got your moon card i love the little face looking down in the moon then you've got this chalice with the water but look you've also got the crayfish that we're used to seeing with the moon as part of the design of the cup and you've got your two little uh, canine creatures there and this is very rws style which i was thinking of it being a pip deck and based on the traditional tarot as it said um I would expect it to be more kind of, you know, the two young children at play um, rather than the naked baby on the horse with the red sash. But even so, it's beautiful. I love it. And then we have our judgment card, which she's got her hourglass, the sun timer. She's holding this skull, lovely wings. She looks a bit like Xena, Princess Warrior. <laughs> but yeah. And then we have the world, which, you know, we have the reef and the uh, bow ribbon around. Um, so, yeah, so there you go. That is um, the Tarot of Loka. As I've said, it doesn't matter which way round. They're all going to be exactly, exactly the same way. Even if we flip them, turn them, doesn't matter. They're all there. So, Tower of Loka, everybody. Let me know your thoughts. This deck isn't going to be for, for everybody. I get that. Um, and, you know, with it just being pips like this rather than some beautifully arranged Marseille-style pips, um, totally, totally get it. But it's such a unique deck and... It's so versatile um, that there's just so many uses for it. So this is going to be one I think I'm going to put into a bag and keep in my bag that I can just whip out, you know, take to the caravan on holiday and play games and all that sort of thing and just introduce my family to the tarot subtly. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, let me know your thoughts. And, uh, yeah, thank you for watching. And until next time. Go in peace, namaste, and blessed be.